Today we'll cover getting your Yearlink phones to connect to our Cloud PBX service. All Yearlink phones are set up in exactly the same way. Uh, we'll provide you with a Get Connected guide along with your extension numbers and your passwords. So getting connected, you need to uh, request the guide if you don't have it. Have a read of this, it's only four or five pages to give you an idea what needs to happen. Unpack the phone. Confirm your power options. This means whether your phone will be powered via PoE across your network cable or whether you have a separate power plug that needs to be uh, put into the, the back of the phone itself. You also need to have access to a PC or computer so we can configure the phone. Common mistakes are simply not even getting the handset plugged into the right socket on the phone or the network cable itself. So let's explain the network cable for a start. This is a general diagram of a situation where a company may only have one network socket under the desk of the user and currently that socket is being used by the user's computer. So therefore, where do we plug the phone? Well, the phone itself has two holes or sockets in the back of it, and generally we can share those sockets with the computer. And on the back, you'll see on the phone, it clearly identifies one that says internet and one that says PC. So you'll take your RJ45 or your network cable, that looks like this here, okay, plug one end into the socket on the floor, and one end into the connection on the back of the phone that says internet. And then to um, take the cable that's plugged into your computer, and since you've unplugged that from the socket on the floor, you now plug it into the back of the, the um, phone where it says PC. Okay, now if you're getting PoE enabled, uh, if you have a PoE enabled switch, then uh, this should activate the phone, it should start because power will be coming in uh, through this connection here. If not, you need to locate the power socket on the back of the phone, get the approved E-Link power supply and plug that into the, the phone there and then the phone should power on. Now this is a, a snapshot of the back of the T46 phone. It's quite clear what these sockets are for. So internet means the cable from the floor, PC means the cable to go to your computer, right? So you're sharing a single network um, cable. Extension for the T46 uh, refers to the um, add-on module that most people wouldn't be using, but maybe the receptionist might use as a, as a phone console. And then on the right-hand side, this is where you would plug in the receiver once you take off out of the phone. Or if you are using also a handset, you plug in the handset here. So you can have both of these plugged in and then you can control on the front of the phone itself uh, whether you're using the handset or whether you're using the, the receiver of the phone itself. Of course, if you don't have PoE, you would be plugging the power into the socket here. Now this is an example of what we you would expect to get from us which is what we call our configuration sheet. And the three key uh, columns of data that you really need to know is the extension number. So that's almost like the phone's login username, if you wish to think about it like that. This would then become that user login's password or that phone's password, which we will configure into the phone shortly. And also importantly down here, you need to note your server name or your PBX server address. On the right hand side here we'll give you details of your voicemail and maybe the default password that we have set on your voicemail. We don't need this at this stage. We need one, two, three. So let's get started. The first thing we really need to do is once you've plugged your phone in successfully you need to press the OK key on the phone. So all of the E-Link phones have a display like this. So press the OK key, and then once you have um, pressed that, you will see on the screen or the display of the phone the IP settings. So you would then see something like this on the screen, and the key address that we need is this first one here, 10.10.0.1. .10 now, in most instances, 
your office IP internally is probably going to be something like 192.168.1.101.102, something like this. Okay, so you need to make a note of that address. And then what we need to do is take that address, in this example it was 10.0.0.1, and you would open your browser on your computer and enter that into your browser, that address. And that will then allow you to access the phone and, and then we can start to set it up. Now, if you, the key thing here is that the computer or the laptop needs to be on exactly the same network as the phone itself, okay? Sometimes, if you're using Wi-Fi network from your laptop, these could be on what we call different networks or subnets, and therefore one computer can't see the other or the, the computer can't see the phone itself. Um, if that's an issue, then you can always use a network cable and plug it into the back of the phone, as we discussed in the earlier slides. That way you know you're, you're on exactly the same network because you're sharing exactly the same cable. Once you do that into your browser and you log um, uh, in, you will see the screen come up. And this will be prompting you to log into the phone. So you know you've now reached your phone and you've connected to the phone itself. And the standard uh, login for all Ulink phones are uh, login as admin, and the password is also admin, as I've done in lowercase on this particular screen. So what we'll do now is we'll go and actually uh, configure a phone. And I've just pressed the OK button on my phone, and I've got an address of 1.1.101. And now you can see that the phone uh, screen has come up, so I'm going to log in with the standard Yeeling admin and password. And this is the first screen that we come to. Um, we can look at this a bit later, but one of the areas that's important is this one. This is the current version of firmware that we're using on this phone. And for those that are new to, to um, um, these mobile, these IP based phones, just like a Windows PC, from time to time, Microsoft would release updates and patches to the Windows operating system. It's similar with these phones. They do release updates of the software that's running on these phones from time to time. And we do provide a service to update these for clients if you wish to subscribe to that, or you need to do it yourself from time to time. And it's a good idea to keep up to date. So what I'm gonna do now is have a look at that spreadsheet. And what I'm gonna do is configure this phone for this extension. And this is my address, and then this is the server. So let's have a look how we would do that. So I'll go back to our browser. The thing you need to do is you need to select account. And depending on the phone you've got, you will have different accounts. This means an account is like a line, right? So this mobile phone only has two lines available. Some of the higher-end phones may have six or more lines available. So just select the first one, which is called account one. And then all we need to do is select enable and for the next four fields just type in the extension number so if we have a look here extension is 5033 so just type in 5033 there 5033 there 5033 there 5033 if you wish you could uh, change 5033 and put your name because that's what will display on your phone but uh, to help people remember what their extension is you can just keep that as 5033 the others, as far as register and uh, username, etc., they're important that we leave them at 5033 and don't alter those. What I'll do now is I'll pick up the password. So I can cut and paste that. It's a complex password for security reasons. Paste that into there. And then all I have to do now is scroll down to the server here. Okay. And we can type in server address as discussed and then we can click confirm. Now you'll see up here, it's saying registering, and now it says registered. So perfect, this means now my phone is actually connected uh, to the Cloud PBX. If I go to the status screen, I can also scroll down here, and you can see account one 5033 at the server address is registered. Now let me show you what would happen if it failed, what it would look like. So what I'm going to do is alter that, for example, and give the wrong register name, etc. And we'll do a confirm. Registering, registering. Now it'll keep trying, and now you see it's failed. 
So if we went to the status, failed. Okay, so that's how you would know you're not connected. It simply will, will tell you that you've failed to register. So I'll put back this information and we'll confirm once more. And the phone should register again. Good. Now what I'll do also is I have got what I call a soft phone sitting on my PC here. So I'm actually going to uh, ring that phone from here. You should be able to ring it. Okay, so I think you can hear that that ringing now. The phone's obviously on my desk. You can't see it, but that that's successful. I can pick the phone up. Hello, one two one two one two. Okay, so that phone is now working uh, quite easy. However, we haven't quite finished the configuration. What we should do now is on the left hand side is select the codex, and our preference is for you to change this order and move the 722 up to here and the G729 uh, to here. And just briefly, these are the uh, what we call algorithms that compress the sound files as they were, um, move through the internet. The G722 gives you what we call wide, brand, wide band and like surround sound experience. So you will it'll be unbelievably clear that the call will be very impressed. The second code is uh, a maximum compression code so if we're talking to people on mobiles and that the audio signal can become very compressed and generally all of these codes just a slightly different standards of this compression so we'll press ok now and then there's last one more under advanced what we'll do is we'll just don't change any of these figures here but scroll down until you see voicemail and then here you can just enter star 97 and what that will do is pick up that code when you press the message button on your phone, it will automatically dial the voicemail for you. Um, that's about all you need to actually set. Uh, I think the only other thing sometimes we, we change is maybe, depending on where you live, you may wish to change the time setting to Tokyo or to uh, Singapore, to Hong Kong, etc. This can be done here. But apart from that, uh, you're now ready to go. If you need to upgrade your uh, firmware, we can cover that separately. Um, and you can find this information out online. So what I could do is come to my browser here and I could type something like NTNT firmware upgrade. OK, so you can type something like this, go to that first link, and then it will tell you what the latest version is. And in fact, you can see that we are one version behind. So the latest version is now 7280, and we are running 7275. So technically, this phone is ready uh, to be upgraded. And what you would do is just download this file here, and then you'd come across to the settings here. And you've got an option here that says Upgrade. And you'd basically grab that file once you uncompress it here and perform the upgrade this way. So that's how that gets done, not too complicated. Okay, so I think that's all you need to do to be connected, and it's fairly straightforward. Now, some troubleshooting, let's say, issues. Um, one of the issues that can happen is that you, you, you won't register, for example. You can't connect. You get that. So the first thing we'd like you to do is to, to see if from your browser you can actually connect to the PBX itself. That means that the security model is correct, that your IP address in your office is registered with our systems and we're able to talk to each other. Now you can do that is simply uh, go to that PDF document that we provided, take that web address there, come across to your browser and plug that into your browser. And if you get a screen like the next screen, that's good. That is the PBX. So you've connected. So your office does have the rights and access to get to the PBX. So that's obviously not the issue. If you can't, uh, if you don't get this and you get, let's say, I'll just put in a silly address here. Okay, let's say, um, you know, you, you don't, you get something like this where nothing happens. 
then uh, you need to speak to us and we'll, we'll just check to, to double check the security uh, that's in place. So at this moment, I'll leave, leave it at that. And if you need to uh, get some more help, then you can call us or you can send us an email and uh, we'll see if we can help troubleshoot what the issues are. Thank you.